Hello, this is Rebecca McDowell, and I'm here with Sylvan McDowell, and he is the author and illustrator of Curvy, the Nart Saga, and his latest comic is Carboniferous. And Sylvan's going to share with us some of his work and also his process for coloring comics. And um, Sylvan, now, do you draw your comics um, by hand and then scan them, or do you do everything digitally? Um, I I always start with a physical uh, pencil drawing. Um, I've uh, I've never gotten the knack of of sketching directly digitally, um, mm -hmm. so I I scan my pencil drawings usually and then ink digitally. Although I, I have sometimes in the past and still do sometimes uh, ink with real ink too, um, but. Uh -huh. But I've always colored digitally um, for forever and ever. Well, so these are some examples of your digitally colored comics, which started out as pencil drawings mm -hmm. and then were scanned and then inked and colored in Photoshop. And do you do everything in Photoshop? Pretty much. Um, yeah, I'm still sticking with Photoshop CS6, as you can see. <laughs> it's very elderly now. So are these both from the Nart Saga? Uh, the uh, the one on the left is from Carboniferous. The, um, mm. the the Narts. Beautiful. Hmm. I really like it. Um, and I have, I have brought a, a little drawing that I was uh, doodling, uh, which is just a, a, a fan art for a, a, a romance novel by Olivia Lee uh, about uh, lesbian con artists in the Regency period. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, so uh, I, I kind of left it half done for the purposes of this. Um, So uh, just kind of, uh, you know, base, basic cell shading coloring. Um, and I, I typically do this, you can see, by using um, color layers in Photoshop that are um, you know, producing shadow and or light. Um, using Photoshop's blending modes um, and then uh, masking them in uh, with, with uh, layer masks to apply the, the lighting effects. Um, uh, you, can, you can see that I have uh, layer groups and folders for the figures and for the background. So, um, uh, that that enables me to use a different layer mask for the lighting on the background from what I use on the foreground. So you can see that um, this shadow layer uh, for the background is, is on here, and then there's a shadow layer for the uh, figures, which um, uh, basically makes it so that you can just kind of draw on some blobby shadows and um, you can uh, you don't have to worry about your shadows like you know getting on the background because it's uh, it's a clipping layer which it just clips to the figure layer. Um, so it helps with you know designing for multi-plane uh, art. So uh, explain that a little bit more. So so you're using these color layers, and each one is basically a field of color that is masked as a masked masking layer with a mm -hmm. masking layer. And then um, and then the one, the darker one that you're that you're pointing to now with your little hand thing is for the foreground. Mm -hmm. And the the slightly lighter blue shadow layer is for the background. And and so that means that you don't have to 
um, shade, you don't have to, it doesn't affect the other layer. And that's because of the way that you have it masked. Is that the way that works? So the, there's the, the, they each have their own mask, but also they're, they're each clipped, they're clipping layers. So you can see if I unclip this, uh, you oh. see the, the lighting effects that I've drawn get all over the background. Um, right. But but by clipping it to the foreground layer, I can make it so that I can I can draw all over the mask and and it doesn't it doesn't get any of my lighting on the background. I did okay. not even know that that was a thing. Yeah, so you can you can clip and unclip a um, a layer in Photoshop by by holding down Option or Alt. Um, and clicking on the bottom of the layer, and it'll clip to the layer below it. Oh, wow, that <laughs> is so cool. So in other words, the only part of it that's gonna show is where there's pixels in the, the layer underneath. Right. Clever, um, very clever. That's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's um, <laughs> uh, there, I, I, there's a bit of a caveat for it, which is that um, using a lot of clipping layers sometimes can be a bit much for Photoshop. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if they've improved that in newer versions. I hope they have. Uh, someday I'll be forced to upgrade. But uh, my current version of Photoshop has been known to die of too many clipping layers disease and crash. <laughs> Death by a thousand clips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, so let's see you in action. To, uh, show us how you um, would then uh, color and light this uh, figure to the right. Um, yeah, so you can see uh, I've popped open my figures layer group and um, I've I, I first drew the line work in this line layer, and then mm -hmm. I have uh, color layers underneath. Um, I, I use this, this uh, layer with the multiply blending mode called blush mm -hmm. to put kind of fine detail work uh, on the color. And I use uh -huh. a, a, a normal opaque color layer for just the, the main blocks of color. Um, and uh, so that I, I use a kind of um, mixture of uh, you know, painting in colors with the paintbrush and uh, using an action to do uh, fills. So um, if we do a little bit of her hair, I've kind of left the hair not, not always outlined with, with line work. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to paint that in because it's, um, you know, it's not uh, it's not defined strictly by the by the line work. Right. And is that your pencil underneath that we can see? Um, uh, sorry. I, I there's little faint gray lines. I wondered if that was the pencil showing through. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, you can see. Uh, I, I have this other layer group called under, which has my original sketch in it, um, which I, uh, I actually, uh, I like to put like a, like a nearly opaque color layer over the sketch to, to, to soften it so that it's very faint um, so that I can more easily work on top of it without being visually confused. Um, but uh, but you can just barely see it and work with it. Um, so um, the uh, the other thing that I I do to you know save time so that I'm not having to paint in every bit of color is is I use some fills to kind of um, you know, just to save time using using an action that I have created specifically for this purpose. Um, so you can see I'm kind of I'm painting in like around where the line work has breaks in it to sort of stopper things. Right. And then once I've got it 
um, closed off, I can use my magic wand. Oop, that's, uh, <laughs> I need to lower the tolerance on the magic wand so that it doesn't spread beyond what it's supposed to get. Yeah, these colors are too close together. <laughs> um, well, that's easier to just do the brush. But uh, you can, um, once I've got this magic wanded, um, I, I've created an action which I've got on the F5 key, which just um, takes, takes my magic wand area, expands it by a few pixels, uh, so that it get it makes sure the um, the fill gets under the line work everywhere and doesn't create fuzzy edges where the fill doesn't quite meet the lines, uh, and then it fills and drops the selection. So, so by by using that combo, I can kind of quickly fill areas without um, you know. Uh, without having to paint every little bit. And, uh, so I'll do a little of that with uh, skin here. So, uh, and kind of just like quickly block in the various color areas this way and then do more detail work on them later. <laughs> you can see that she's got a lot of uh, stray light over there uh, from the uh, the other figure. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, redone a little bit in a bit. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea what color I'm going to make her dress, but I can just put in a nasty color, and I could always flood fill it to something else later because it's, it's just a, a basic color for now. Um, uh, I probably want to give her give her something else for her eyes. Uh, I notice you don't make the whites of her eyes white. No. Um, yeah, I, I generally avoid using pure whites and blacks um, because both because it can be too just kind of visually like extreme. I mean, you don't really see pure white or pure black in real life generally. Um, but, but also because um, it allows your lighting effects to work on them. Right. Um, you know, like the highlights in the eyes wouldn't wouldn't look so good if if the whites of her eyes were just like blinding light, which they would not be in real life. Right, um, but also uh, making the the whites of the eyes an off white allows the you know if you have like a blue cast on the scene with one of your color layers, it, you know it can turn that that off white to be a, a slightly blue um, versus depending on the blending mode. Um, a pure white might just not get modified at all. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, so uh, I've blocked her in except for this little, little something. <laughs> you know, that that bit of a Regency dress. Um, and I'll just quickly do the same thing with the background, which is very simple. I've just got this kind of red curtain situation. Oop, nope. <laughs> I have that layer on uh, 10 
transparency box so that can do anything. Um, got some bright window pane. And maybe this is. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, some of these some of these lighting layer wobbly spots where uh, I couldn't actually see what the light mask looked like at the time I drew it because there was no, no content on that layer in that area. So it's kind of kind of lumpy. But um, as for the figure here, so I can just start kind of blobbing in light on her. I've got this kind of um, like rim light sort of uh, situation for this scene where they're standing in front of a window. Um, so, you know, you can do just, just do a kind of simple uh, bit of lighting where the, the parts of them that are directly in front of the window get the light. And then maybe a little bit on the back of the room. Um, you can see uh, that I have I have two different light layers on the figures, um, which I'm doing to kind of give them like a little bit of like golden hour, like orange glow. Um, so right now I'm just um, I'm just painting in on this blue multiply layer, which which uh, paints in the shadows. Um, and then, you know, not really necessarily satisfied with the way that looks, but assuming I was completely done with the, uh, the lighting, um, what I would do is just simply copy this um, mask onto the, the bright overlay yellow layer and then invert it. Um, and that gets the uh, the bright highlight, you know, orangey glow on just the spots that I masked out of the shadow layer. So you get the blue, mm. the, the blue darkness on the shadow areas and the orange brightness on the highlight areas. Wow. And how did you copy it? Um, oh, I just held option and then dragged the... Uh, so um, I guess the other the other part of the process that I, I haven't done on this figure is is the stuff in the blush layer where um, because it's set to multiply, I can just take a very faint pink and just kind of like uh, you know put it where I want to get a little bit of like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, variation in skin tone or whatever. Um, or take a, a, you know, a very faint gray where I want to add like some, you know, some soft embroidery to her, her dress or something. I mean, you know, she's got like polka dots. Those are terrible polka dots, but you know, maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe little flowers. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm doing shamefully with her couture, but <laughs> it's a perfectly nice green. <laughs> it just needs some mushrooms. Everything needs to have mushrooms on it now. Oh, there you go, little little cute mushrooms. That's a fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so what about the curtains are you do you do any additional shading on those or just the lines and the and the the little the highlight on the side? I mean it really it really depends how 
you know, crazy you want to go, of course. Um, you know, these curtains, all, all I really did was give them a little bit of rim light like the characters have. There's a brighter part right where the window is. Um, I also kind of, there's a spot that's bugging me over here where my field didn't quite reach. And fill that in. Um, but you know, you could you could put all kinds of additional lighting effects here. Um, one thing that I'll do sometimes if I if I feel like the basic cell shading isn't quite enough is I have some kind of you know softer, more textural brushes that I can use to kind of um, uh, you know play with it. Um, and did you make those brushes or are they presets? I think I found this brush somewhere. I mean, there's a lot of kind of texture brushes that you can find around. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that this one is especially great, but uh, I've been using it. But this is, um, sort of, uh, you, know, you, can, you can get some more mm -hmm. of like, Soft lighting effects with this, if, if you if you want um, to, to give some some dimension to to the shadow areas or something. A little bit of texture. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no shadow in the window. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Another thing you can do to kind of like. Um, uh, add a little bit of extra pizzazz is like take your bright white layer and um, give it like a kind of um, uh, add like a like a Gaussian blur to it with a pretty wide radius and then you can um, uh, fade it and set it to yeah, there we go. So that that gets you a kind of like um, glow in the in the mask just around the, the bright areas, um, which you know creates a kind of you know psychological sense of the, the really bright sunlight, like kind of haloing in your eyes. Nice. Um, so How yeah. do you do the highlights in the eyes? Oh yeah, uh, I have a I have a little layer at the very top here called Ting, which is just a Ting uh, a layer I can use that isn't affected by the lighting layers below, or just like if I want to put like a you know, uh, bright. Come on, ten percent capacity. <laughs> a <Okay>. bright dot. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, to kind of you know, give someone that staring into their lover's eyes glow. Um, uh, you can also see that I've been sloppy with this blush that we're doing outside of the things. Oh, it, the blush is not is not. Um, it's uh, not. Clip. It's not clipped. Although you can you can clip it, and I sometimes do that um, to to make sure that it doesn't go beyond the color. It's easy to mish 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 the blush. Yeah, I I try not to clip too many layers because of the aforementioned Photoshop explosions. Clip catastrophes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mushrooms look very good. See, I can made a contribution. <laughs> the stress pattern she's got is really insane. <laughs> hey, you know, it was back then. People did whatever they want. Oh yeah, they were they were doing all sorts of bizarre clothing experiments. I think actually that's this book is kind of about that to some extent. She's, oh, is it? <laughs> She's like an experimental weaver or something. What's going on? Read the book. It's called The Hell See, There you go. <laughs> well, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Well, thank you. 
thanks for sharing your trade secrets with us. <laughs> now you didn't show us about your actions. You said what the action does. Oh yeah, I can, I can show off my action uh, with a simple fill. Um, so I recorded this action. Um, it just, you, 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 it starts with whatever selection you currently have, um, which is you know usually going to be just something using the magic wand, and then expands it by five pixels, fills it using the current foreground color, and then deselects. And so oh. you created that just by by um, clicking on the actions. And you can you can just record an action. And you just record. And it'll it'll record whatever then, you do. And yeah, whatever you do, it you makes just, it into an action. But right, you can assign a function key to it. Um, the other thing about how I'm doing that that is maybe worth saying is that the um, I'm using I'm using the sample all layers setting on the um, uh, the magic wand to um, you know to ensure that it uh, is is aware of all the different stuff in the different layers when I'm wanding so I can um, I can be working on the color layer but it'll respond to the existence of the lines in the line layer mm -hmm. yeah yeah and contiguous means it it just keeps going until it hits pixels of the wrong color and then it stops right if i turn off contiguous then i could be using that to select skin tone like tones everywhere in the image or, or, or what have you but usually for this kind of purpose of doing fills within specific areas of the figure i'm, I'm turning contiguous on so that it'll just get the area that I'm in, like I'm clicking inside so then you just hold down the shift key to keep on selecting areas of the same color um in my case i actually i have this um this setting on add to selection so i don't even have to hit the shift oh, key. Uh, it, oh it, fancy add it, to selection yeah it performs as if you're always holding the shift key um if you turn it to normal mode then if you click again it'll deselect the original selection unless you're holding the shift key who, who, who's got time to hold the shift key these days? Not, who's not, got hands to hold the shift key? Not me. I'm I'm injured. Yeah, there's only so many fingers. <laughs> you you might notice I used to wear this on this hand, but now I have one on this hand and not on that hand. I'm uh, that that doesn't mean I'm faking it. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> it just means my left hand hurts now. <laughs> Anyway, so that's great. Well, thank you so much for um, sharing all of this with us. Do you have anything else uh, that you want to cover, or are we um, have we pretty much done it all? Um, I think that uh, that hit on most of the stuff. Well, this is I learned so much from this, Sylvan, and um, I knew I would because even though we started out using the same computer many many years ago we have each evolved our own ways of using the technology as it and as it itself involved evolved oh, yeah. and um and your uh, system is really is really great for lighting i really like the way that you use these um color layers and and the, and the clipping and the the masking it's like all kinds of things happening at once it's, it's, it's a color, it's a clipping, it's a masking. And could you show me what the um, layer, um, do, do, you, do you do it as multiply or just a regular when Which you have one? one of the color layers? Oh, these, these shadow layers are multiply, multiply. And I use overlay typically for, for a bright light layer. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Overlay adds a nice bright color cast without, you've got, without, without obliterating the line work. And you've got that at 80%. Mm -hmm. And the shadow layer, how what 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 opacity do you use on that? 50. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, now I get to steal your 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 way of doing things and and, 
and and beat you at your own game. <laughs> I, 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 I'll be doing something different tomorrow anyway. I'm talking to hey. uh, <laughs> my process and changing it. You know, so. Well, this is very valuable. Thank you so much, Sylvan. Really appreciate you taking the time. No All righty. Helpful to someone. <laughs> <laughs>